everyone. My name is Judelle Niemeyer and I am the business manager at quiltworks.com. I'm also Judy Niemeyer's daughter. And today I'm going to teach you how to use a program called Quiltster to color a pattern called the Valley Blossoms. Quiltster is a online program that allows you to pair commercially available fabrics with commercially available patterns so that you can see what your quilt is going to look like before you purchase it. In addition, there is a marketplace in Quiltster where sellers have created a series of quilts and several of them have Valley Blossoms designs and you can choose from those to make a pattern. Or you can actually go into the marketplace and use fabrics available from one of our fabric shops and have a kit created and have that sent directly to you. There's lots of ways you can use it, but the primary purpose is so that you can do a custom colorway of your design and get all of the yardage information, all of the fabric references, and all of the strip cutting information directly from the program before you start your pattern. If you're using the pattern to do this, we have the information in there as well. However, it pertains to the, the specific colorway that's on the cover sheet. Quiltster will allow you to mix up the pieces and do something quite a bit different if you want um, and still give you the correct yardage for the pattern. Uh, so hold on here just a second. I need to switch over and share my screen for um, Quiltster and then we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is to go to quiltster.com. Now on this page, if you have never set up a um, account before, you can do that under subscribe. Uh, if you don't see subscribe up here in the right hand corner, it depends on what kind of a device you're using. Sometimes there's some little lines over here. You can click on those little lines and a pop-up menu will come up and it will have subscribe at the bottom. Um, you can also click on sign me up. That takes you to the same place. And I also wanna mention before I leave this page that um, you can scroll down on this page and subscribe to the Quiltster newsletter. This is a very important tool if you're gonna use Quiltster for a lot of different things. And um, it, it gets you information like which new uh, fabric collections are added, when new patterns are added, when new features are available and so on. So I would highly encourage you to subscribe to the newsletter. Um, so I already have an account, so I'm just gonna to go to log in. And then you can log in with your um, login information. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is my account. So a couple things. One is I can see what lots of different people are doing with the program because um, I have an admin account. Uh, another thing is um, yours is gonna look slightly different if you've never had an account before, like there may not be anything under my projects. So a quick overview of this page, this is called the dashboard. So in the dashboard, there's my projects. There's also fabric stash. So Fabric Stash, if you click on that, you can go browse all the different fabrics that are in Quiltster already. And then you can pick and choose some collections that you like. Uh, there's also a page called Gallery. So if I click on Gallery, Gallery gives me a, um, oh, let's see, let's go there here. So Gallery just shows you a bunch of projects that other people have created in Quiltster and then shared publicly. So these are all publicly shared patterns. You can see there's even a couple of Valley Blossoms that have already, already been shared to the gallery. here. Um, you can search by pattern and designer. There's also a little search button over here that's hiding underneath me. Move me up to the top here. So you can type into this you can clear filters, you can see what's going on in the valley and you can learn or in the gallery and you can learn lots of different things about different patterns that people are coloring. So then there's also a place called Marketplace. If you wanna work on the Valley Blossoms pattern and use fabrics that are available for purchase right through the system, the Marketplace is a great place to start. The other thing you can do in Marketplace is you can click on kits. So if you click on kits here, 
you can see that a number of our sellers in the system have already created different patterns. So you can search by quilt shop, you can search by designer, you can search by patterns, um, and then you can search by fabric collections if you want, sizes. So if we come in here and we go down to Valley Blossoms, you can see that there's three different versions of Valley Blossoms that were available from one of our sellers recently. These ones are all sold out, but I'm very positive that more are coming soon from both, um, this was from So That, and also from others as well. Uh, so let's go back. So that's one option, is you could simply come in, click on kits, and pick the version of the quilt that you want, or you could click on patterns, and then you could choose Valley Blossoms and you could create a design right from there. And if you're doing it through the marketplace, all of the fabrics that you're using to color your pattern are available for purchase from a quilt shop. And you will color your quilt and then click buy now and you will get that from the quilt shop. At the present time, the quilt shop is Yoder Department Store. Uh, we expect more quilt works or quilt shops to be added in the future. So by the time you finally make your Valley Blossoms quilt, maybe there will be some options for you to choose a quilt shop there as well. Um, but in the meantime, uh, it's all through um, Yoder Department Store. So let's say that you want to use some fabrics that you already have in your stash and um, that you want to use some of those in your project and then find matching fabrics to go with them. So in order to use stuff that's already in your stash, if you click on fabric stash, there is a way for you to upload a fabric. So you need to use the create a new fabric button. Um, this assumes that you've already created a, an image of your fabric. So you may need to um, take a picture of it with your cell phone. Make sure you're doing it in good lighting so you get a good representation. You may need to find that fabric swatch online um, or you may have had it sent to you by a um, fabric company. Other people, in fact, this is what we do at the office. We actually scan them. So we have a scanner bed and we put the pieces of fabric right on the scanner and then we get an image from there, and then we load that. So the key things that you need to know, so I'm gonna just load a fabric or show you how this works in general. So I have a folder here called fabrics, and I can go in and I can choose something. So um, I'm just gonna choose a folder here. So see how some of these are not square? I will need to open those up and edit those in a photo editing software to make them a square fabric before I load them into Quiltster. Quiltster cannot take rectangles. All of the grids are set up on a square. Uh, the other thing that I wanna know is the size of that. So for example, um, I would have to open this up. So if I open this with, I'm just gonna use Photoshop here real quick, just to give you an idea about how this works. So if I open this swatch in Photoshop, I'm going to find out what the size of the swatch already is. Um, the size information is very important in Quiltster so that you get the proper scale for your fabric. So how do I find out scale? Um, in, in Photoshop, you click image, then you choose um, image size, and it'll tell you this is a nine and a quarter by 13.88 inch square um, file, and it's 72 inches, so, or 72 pixels per inch. 72 is fine for resolution for Quiltster. Your quilt images will still come out looking great, but I would just basically take this and um, choose a square. So I would get a 9.25 inch square um, and then I would crop it. And now I have a square. Now I can just save this out as a square. I know it's nine and a quarter inches. Um, the SKU information is this 1714-10, which is the actual file name, and I got that from the manufacturer. Um, but that would be the image that I would load. I'm not going to save this, uh, but I just wanted to show you that getting it to a square and understanding that scale is very important. So then when I click a file, I would choose the square file and upload it. I'm not gonna do that here because then it uploads into everybody's account because mine is admin, but that's how you add fabrics if you want to do one on your own.
Um, make sure that you know that size because it's going to ask you for size. You don't have to put in 9.25 by 9.25. You just have to put in 9.25. Just put in one dimension size. Um, put it in in inches. And that's what it's looking for is an inch measurement, not centimeters, not, um, not some sort of a yardage fraction or anything like that. It needs to have um, the inches. And then give it a name and then save, save that skew out. You can also see in here that you can um, search by fabric. So if I wanted to do mine, for example, out of Tula Pink fabrics, I could go to Free Spirit, Tula Pink, I could see all the collections that are in the system. If I knew that I wanted to use De La Luna, then I could start there. Um, I can also go collect fabrics across multiple collections by hitting this little heart. Um, and then I could maybe go into her solids and pick some solids that I thought might look good with it. This is just as an example. And then I can come over to mine and this My Favorites button, that has all of the fabrics that I have clicked the little hearts on. Now, if you wanna get rid of those, you have to unclick the hearts. So sometimes that can take a little bit of time. So just be prepared for the fact that you might have to um, unclick the hearts and you may not wanna put very many fabrics in there. So if you just wanna get rid of them, you can refresh this page or you can um, go out and then come back in. And now you only have the fabrics that you wanted. Another kind of fun thing about this page, I'm gonna clear the filters here, go back to the start is you can click on this, and if you kind of know you want to do a purple quilt or something, you come in and choose the color that you're wanting to make it, and you will get a whole bunch of fabrics in different colors. Um, you can load those um, as well. Um, this is a good time for me to also show you something else. If you're loading your fabrics, you want to make, and you did it from a picture, uh, see this piece here? See how it has some creases in it? You want to take a picture that doesn't have any creases in it. So make sure and iron your fabric. And then also, there was a little line at the top of their image. So that will show up in all your quilts. You want to make sure and get a nice representation of your fabric. Uh, let's see. Oh, there was, there was another one I was going to show you here. Let's see if it reloads. Um, so then, uh, let's see. Maybe I won't be able to find it. Okay, here's another one with a crease. Here's one that has some shadowing on it. And then um, I did see one earlier that had like a, the cutting board in the background. So they didn't take a picture that covered the entire section of the fabric. So, um, you know, this one here, how it covers the entire section of the fabric and everything is uniform and even, that's the kind of look that you should be going for when you're loading your fabric swatches. Um, okay, so we're gonna go back to the dashboard and then we're gonna go into the Valley Blossoms quilt. So, like I said, you can start from the marketplace and go work on one where you can purchase the fabrics but I'm gonna do one through my projects. Um, in my projects, there's a much wider selection of fabrics in the system. You can also work with the fabrics that you loaded there, whereas in the marketplace, you can only work with fabrics that are available for sale. And you need to, um, and then the other thing about uh, working on it through my projects is um, that, let's see. I'm gonna try and find it here quickly. So I'm gonna scroll down and find Valley Blossoms. Oh, I have that under projects. I need to be into. Okay, let's start over with that. So I'm gonna click on my projects. And then I'm gonna click create new project, which I did not do. And then I'm going to go to filters and search for Valley Blossoms. Okay, so now I'm gonna click on this. So under Valley Blossoms, uh, like I was saying, 
Uh, you can work with fabrics that are out of your stash. There's also a lot of fabrics that are in the My Projects section, which may not be av available in the marketplace because the shop may not have purchased those fabric collections, or they may be something that's out of date and you have them and uh, you wanna use those designs. Um, the other thing is if you purchase the cover quilt, you can actually click on this version of it and save that right into your account and you'll have a quiltster version of the cover quilt colorway that you can work from. So I'm gonna choose the Valley Blossoms blank template here. And then you gotta give it a name. Click create new project, which I thought I clicked, but apparently not. Now, I will admit this one takes a little bit of time to load because there's a lot of applique on it and Quiltster does take longer to load the applique blocks. So please be patient with it. Um, it will also take a longer time to work with the applique blocks um, in the quilt. So sometimes once you're adding fabrics, it might take a little bit for it to respond and that sometimes can feel confusing. But if you just give it a chance, Quiltster will get there. So we're gonna start first with this block in the middle. So see how it's loaded or it's selected all of those at the same time? That means that those are all going to be colored at the same time, even though I only am gonna focus on one color or one block, and they are gonna be colored exactly the same as each other. Now down here at the bottom, this lights up once you click a section. And then there's also a clear, there's a deselect. If I press deselect, it deselects everything on the quilt. So I'm gonna reselect them. There's also a um, rotate. So if I click rotate, um, the blocks would rotate, although in this quilt, it doesn't make any sense for them to do so. So that button isn't useful. Um, and then there's also a sync button. So I have them clicked clicked here and this is all lit up. So now I'm gonna click on the thread and then it will open it up and now I can start adding fabrics. So the first thing I need to do is select the collection that I wanna work with. So I'm actually gonna go down just because I know this collection well and select one called Desert Rose, which is the quiltworks.com newest cotton collection that we released, which um, is still available on the market and was just released at um, fall market this year. So I'm gonna just start coloring here. And really it's as easy as clicking on the area of the quilt over here. You can also click up here and that will move you around the quilt as well. Um, but I'm going to click um, directly on the picture just because I'd like to have that visual reference. And once you click all the spaces and get them all colored in here, okay. So I have my set of blocks colored. Um, Then you just press the save button here at the bottom. And the first section of the quilt is complete. Now, 
On the actual Valley Blossoms pattern, the way we set this up, um, I actually unlocked these center blocks and then chose every other one here and then alternated those colors in the middle so that I got kind of a interlocking star look. So I'll show you how that works here. Save. All right. So now you click the next section here. I'm gonna relock these. So you can see, it, I mean, it really doesn't take that long, but you're going to probably want to play around with the colors as you go. Um, I'm just trying to get a, you know, a reasonable idea of something here that I can show you what it looks like. Um, okay, so then I'm going to save those blocks out. And then I'm gonna click on the border. And the border is the location where you can definitely see that it will take you a little bit of time here. So like I clicked on it and I'm just gonna wait for it all to load up here. All right. And then if you need to, you can zoom in on it so you can see a little bit better what you're clicking on. And I'm going to color the paper piece sections of the quilt first. And you can see they take a little bit of time to add the color. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to click another section here. And each little piece here will just take a little bit to load the colors in. I'm going to scroll out, get these last two pieces here of the main paper piecing section. Okay. 
And then we can talk about the applique. Okay, so now there are 49 colors of applique in this pattern. So you just gotta scroll in here and patiently load them. and get the applique color. So um, each click looks like it's taking about, I don't know, well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So somewhere around 10 to 12 seconds. Um, so that means you'll probably, it'll probably take you about five minutes to color the applique here. Um, but you just keep clicking on a section by section by section and get the applique colored. Um, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to color it here. If you want to scroll through the video faster uh, and get through all the clicking parts for, from this part, then I totally understand. Go ahead and do that and then get to where the quilt is colored. Um, if you want to watch me click through it, you can watch me click through it as well. And then I'm going to show you how you get yardage information and so on and so forth from the pattern um, in a bit. So just bear with me while I color the applique and then we'll get to the next step. I actually think I'm gonna change the color of this background too to something that's not quite as busy so that my applique stands out just a little bit better. And of course, if you wanna change collections, you can do that as well. I just am gonna stick with all of this collection because it's easiest to do that for the demo. Now, something I will mention here too, um, if I click on the uh, this flower over here, nothing will light up. It's not because you can't color it or there's something wrong with the program. It's because see how the flower is overlapping this seam line? The rest of the flower is actually over on the other side of the quilt here. So, and all of those pieces are linked together with pieces that you click on on this side. So you actually have to color the flower over here and then it will color in all four corners. So just in case you're, you started clicking over there and you were confused by it, that's why it is the way it is. Let's see here.
Uh, let's see. Let's go back to this guy here. Now, see this side of the quilt here? You can see some things are actually coloring. That's because you're cutting the, this is the other side of the block. So when we flip over there, a bunch of the fabrics are all, already going to be added and we just need to um, finish off whatever hasn't been added on that side of the quilt. Uh, they are colored the same color on both sides um, because there's enough fabric on each strip to cut the pieces that are the same on all eight. Um, well, there would be basically eight corners of the quilt, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um, you just need to um, fill out on the other side the last few pieces once we get over there which will save you some time. All right, so now let's scroll over to this other edge over here and finish up the last few colors. Oops. All right, it looks like we only have one flower left.
I love doing it this way because you don't have to pay so much attention to fabric references to make sure that you have everything in the right spot. You don't have to pay so much attention to yardage or anything. It just automatically adds it all up and calculates it out for you. So um, you can focus entirely on making this about the quilt that you want to make, if that makes sense what I'm saying. That way you don't have to um, worry about all of the um, technical details. You just worry about whether or not you think it's pretty or not. And then if you get to a point where you're like, oh, I don't think there's enough contrast between some of these colors, you can always go back and switch things out and tweak it until you're happy with the end result. I'm not going to make too many changes to the one that I'm putting together here because it's for demonstration purposes only, but uh, you sure have the opportunity to do that. And I'll show you some helpful tools here in a second for ways that you can compare and contrast some different looks so that you can see what it is that you really like. We're almost done here. I'm make this one. All right. There we go. So now I'm gonna go in and save it. I'm gonna get my mouse down to the save button here. And again, give it a little bit of a chance to save. All right, so now it's done. So now I can see what my quilt looks like. Like I said, I can go back and I can tweak some things if I want. You can also click on, actually at this point, I would probably come over here and press save. That way I didn't accidentally mess anything up. But then I, you could come up and you could play around with it. If you click that button, see how all the lines that separate the different blocks go away? You can also change the background since I used a light fabric there. You could change the background darker so that it stands out better. You can zoom in and you can zoom out if you want to look at anything closer. Um, so, and then over here is all of the information about the project. So a couple things, there's lots of pieces on this quilt and some of them take, some of them are kind of hard to see and you may have accidentally missed coloring one. If you click on this details and this says 100%, 20 out of 20 and 512 out of 512, that means you've gotten everything colored. So that's good. Um, if you also want to click on resources, you can click on this resources button. We'll actually put a link to the video series for how to make this quilt in there as soon as we get the videos loaded. You can change the name of it by clicking on this pencil. You can delete the project if you wanted. Um, I'm just going to click back to editor on that. Uh, another thing you could do is you could click save as. So you guys don't have this template button. That's only me but you can press save as, and that will create a second version of it. So if I saved it as a new thing, then I could change out the name and then I could go in and I could change out some colors and some of the blocks if I wanted to see what it looked slightly different, for example. Um, for, so I'm just, I'll do it just to show you how it works. So save as, I'm gonna call it example two, and I'm gonna save it as new. And like I said, just give it a second because it might take a bit for it to load because the applique is a um, large block. And if for some reason it doesn't load or something weird happens, after you, as long as you've saved it or you save as, you can press this refresh button and everything will pop up. But like I said, this popped up just fine. So what I'm going to do, I want to change this blue in the center because I don't think that it pops enough. So I'm going to unlock it because remember I unlocked it to color those um, so that I could get that um, alternating look. Okay, so I'm going to click every other one. I'm going to go in, I'm going to choose that blue and I'm going to choose this gold polka dot. Um, now it looks like I missed one of those. So I'm gonna click this and then I can click the block that I want that I missed. 
Then I can press this sync button and that will just sync. That will make the second block I clicked the same as the first block I clicked. So now I can go in and click the other four. And I can find, I'm gonna close that because obviously I selected the wrong one here. Okay, so I like that look a little bit better. I get a nicer pop to the center. Now I'm gonna save it again. And then if I wanna go out and look at them both, I can't pull them both up next to each other, but I can at least look at them both next to each other on the projects page, so. Um, I have a filter set somewhere. All right, so this was one version and this is the other version. So those are the two versions of the quilt. Okay, so I'm gonna click back into it for a second and then I'm gonna show you what a couple other buttons do here. So we have the share button. So remember I told you about the gallery where you could share a quilt publicly before? That's what this button is. So if you click that share button, that will then place an image of this quilt into the share into the gallery so that other people can see it. If you decide you wanna unshare it, you can just click on the share button again and it will say unshare. Okay, so then there's yardage. So if I go into yardage, I can see all the yardage information for each of the fabrics that I picked in totality here. I can also click on by block and this has it all broken down by fabric reference so I can see all the places I used it and I can also go in and click inch strip. So the nice thing is like here BD6L you need two three and a quarter inch strips. This gives you all of your cutting information that you may have used for, um, or it's the same information as you need on your pre-class instructions. So if you are you looking at your introduction booklet and the pattern and you see pages three and four, there's some tables on there with a lot of strip cutting information based on the colorway on the cover. This, for example, gives you um, the strip cutting information, which is identical to what you see in that table. It's just grouped and organized different. And these, um, and then this tells you what those fabric references are and what the strip cutting information is, which is the same thing that the table does. Okay, so I can close out of that. I can also click on this print button. So this gives me the same information as in the yardage chart. However, um, the one thing it does, so I can actually print it. So I can click on the print button and it'll pull up a um, print thing that you can print to a pr your printer at home. Um, you can also click this and copy it. Now this link can be shared with anybody who, whether or not they have a Quiltster account or not, and anyone can then open it up and see your project. Um, the great part about this right here is that if you now want to order this from a quilt shop that doesn't have to happen to be a seller in Quiltster, but you know they have the fabrics, you can click on this and then you can send them that link in an email or a text message or however you want to communicate with them. Um, I use Messenger a lot or even on Instagram through direct messaging, just, just paste that link into however you're going to communicate and um, they can pull up this page. And it has, again, the same information, the um, by fabric, by block, and then inch strips um, or yardage. So. Um, so also, I'm gonna go back to the project editor here. 
I'm going to show you a couple more cool things on that yardage chart. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Be patient, and then it'll load. Okay, so on the yardage chart, um, you can also add backing and binding. So if I want to add backing to my order, I can go in and choose a backing. And then I can add binding, choose a light fabric because it was light. Um, so then the other thing you can do here, which I think is pretty cool, is let's say the shop doesn't have this fabric or I decided I really didn't like this blue here very well. I can click on that and I can go out and I can find something else. So the shop may make a recommendation for me out of a fabric that they have. So. Let's say they didn't have that one, but uh, I don't know what fabrics I'm pulling up here, but I'm just gonna go out and find something. So I'm gonna pull up floral pop. So they didn't have this color, but the shop said, I have this. <laughs> I don't actually like that. So let's find something else. Um, these are boutiques and kind of stick with. Okay. So they didn't have this color, but they have this color. So they send me a swatch, I click on it, and then I can go onto the quilt and I can see whether or not I like that one better or not, which um, you can see where it loaded it. Let's add some darks. So you get just a little bit tealer of a color there, like in here and in there. And I mean, you may look at that and you may say, yeah, I love that. That's exactly what I want. I'm happy with that substitution. Um, but that makes it really easy to substitute a color where it might have to go all over the quilt and you don't have to search it out and find it. So anyway, I'm gonna click save. And I'm gonna go back to projects here for a second. All right, so there's my Valley Blossoms. So real quick, I could also duplicate it from here and open up a different version of it to color a different version by clicking on this button. That's the duplicate button. And that'll give me the, um, the ability to change the design. Oops. Go back to projects. And I can name it something new and it'll open up colored and then I can start from that point. I can also, click on this pencil and change the name from here or delete it. So if I decided that this was the version I liked and this one I didn't, I wasn't so happy with, I could just click on that and then I could click delete project, yes. And now it's gone. Um, make sure you wanna delete it if you wanna delete it. So then this is another share button. So I could share now to the gallery and that puts it in the gallery. And then, like I said, if I click on this now, it just says unshare if I decided to unshare it. And then the other thing is this button here takes you directly to the print page. So I wouldn't have to click on the pattern and then enter the print page moving forward if I had the design complete. I could just click on print page and get all of the information that I needed from, from that area. So another thing, this is something else that, um, we really like to do here at Quiltworks. We like to use this duplicate button and then break it down. We call it deconstructing the quilt. Just make sure if you're deconstructing it that you're always using the duplicate button. Sometimes you might wanna duplicate a couple versions of the original design if you're gonna deconstruct just in case you accidentally saved the wrong thing. So I'm gonna say Valley Blossoms um, Basket Diamond. I'm gonna create new project here. And you'll see um, now as it's opening up, I can go in and I can delete all of, delete the other blocks besides the basket diamond. And this makes it really easy to prepare my project for the, um, for the basket diamond um, video. If I've, especially if I've used my own colorway. So I can click here 
And then I just go to clear. And then I click the border and I clear that. So now all I have left is the diamonds. So now I can save that out. But then when I click on yardage over here, all I have is the yardage just for that center section. And when I go to buy block, the information in the buy block and yardage view matches the yardage chart. The information in inch strips then tells me how many inch strips I need of each fabric. Um, additionally, AB5 and AB4, you're gonna see that twice in your list here because remember how we unlocked the blocks and colored them different? So what I would do is I would just make this one AB4A and this one AB5B. And then over here, this one's gonna be AB5A and this is gonna be AB4B. So um, I would write that in. When I print this out, I would actually write that in on the back side. Quiltster doesn't know to do that or how to put the A's and the B's on the end of it if you color them differently. Um, but it does give you the correct yardage. And then if you've colored them differently, then in the pre-class instruction video, we explained to just cut a swatch of each of them and put them next to each other on your unit chart. And then you're just gonna cut the number of strips you need to cut half of the pieces from one color and half of the pieces from the other. So sometimes that means that you can just, like if you need two strips, then Quilter will tell you you need one of each. But if you only need one strip for eight sections, then you're gonna need two strips of each so that you can um, cut four from one and four for the other. So you'll have a little bit of wasted fabric in that situation, but um, it'll be worth it to have the color layout that you're interested in. So um, you can deconstruct the pattern for all of the different um, booklets. And then it makes it really easy for you to prepare those um, strips just for each booklet and go back and double check that you make and make sure you have everything in the right place. Um, so that's what you need to know about Quiltster and the Valley Blossoms um, project. Once you play around and color a few of those, then you'll have the chance to um, or you'll learn some things that you can use to apply to some of our others as well. And uh, like I said, if you don't wanna waste your time coloring, you can just go back and go through the marketplace and purchase ones that others have colored for you. Um, thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, you can either post them on the YouTube channel or you can send them to info at quiltworks.com or to info at quiltster.com and we can help you. Uh, if your questions are about subscriptions or things about how Quiltster works in general, quiltster.com is the right place to go. If it's about questions about how the layout works or the Valley Blossoms pattern, you can contact Quiltworks. Um, I'm also going to mention go to um, Facebook and follow the Quiltster Facebook page and then also the Quiltster Support Network. They also have a YouTube channel with tutorial videos and they have Instagram as well. Um, and I think they even have Pinterest. So you can follow them in all of those locations and find out more information. Um, there's more than just Quiltworks patterns in the system. There's patterns from other designers as well. So make sure and look for something like that to see if your favorite designer's in there. And if they're not, let them know and we'll try and work with them and get them in. So thank you.